Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel and today we have a look into the dependencies of Nuxt and if we have an issue here, folks. Let's go. Before we start with the actual meat of the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow along. We're very close to 10k subscribers after, well, a uh, shorty one year of YouTube. So thanks all for the amazing support. Thanks for joining. If you enjoy the content here, then don't forget to subscribe. That helps a lot. Also, if you're curious uh, and want to get some cool stickers like this one, yeah, new edition, uh, feel free to reach out at some conferences. I'll be around at the ViewConf in Germany. Uh, that's happening next week. Uh, I'll be at ViewFest in Japan and also in View Toronto. Yes, that's true. Once again, looking forward to all these and also some more next year. But uh, yeah, if you're around or also on some meetups, please uh, just hit me up for some Nox stickers or these uh, goodies here. And uh, there will be one or two raffles as well. So definitely check that out and uh, let's get started. Because recently when I was scrolling through Reddit, I came across this wonderful thread in the r slash Nuxt Reddit post here saying deprecated warnings on Nuxt app create. Hi, I'm starting to learn Nuxt. Amazing choice. Really good idea. And I noticed many deprecated warnings when running npx Nuxy at latest init project name. I got the following warnings and then some warnings. I'm concerned most about the first one. We'll come to that a little bit. Is this an issue which could be a problem later? Is there a way to solve it? Of course, I tried to Google it. I found some solution for Next.js, but I was not able to apply those to Nux. Let's have a look if first, that's still case. Second, what these warnings say. And then we dive deep into the packages and figure out if that's actually a problem for our Nux application or not. Because we want to make sure that these warnings are not all dependencies or some issues, of course, we want to set up a new Nuxt application. We can do so with npx Nuxy at latest in it. We've seen that. I also want to use the Nuxt v4 compatibility template here to opt into the v4 breaking changes. It's not necessary. It won't give different results, but it's a good practice to do that now straight away when starting with new applications and then just the name. So if we run that, let's see what will happen. First, the package manager. I go with npm here to see these warnings. And now that might take a little bit, but that's fine. And let's see if the warnings trickle down or if we just get a plain and clean and wonderful application out here. And after roughly a tiny bit of waiting, of course, this will be cut out for you. We can say we don't want a Git repository and then the command ran through and we already see, okay, wait, we have that here. So these warnings are real. Let's dive into them step by step, see which dependencies they are, what the warnings say, and uh, then figure out if this is important or not. The user post on Reddit was especially worried about the very first warning from a package called inflight. It seemed to be deprecated and says, this module is not supported and leaks memory. Do not use it. Check out lru-cache if you want a good and tested way to coalesce async requests by a key value, which is much more comprehensive and powerful. That's a pretty strong warning. How about the rest? npm log says no longer supported. Rimref says, why version older than v4, not supported. Are we there yet? Fun package name, by the way, not supported. And then glob, 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 prior to v9, not longer supported. And gauge or goge, uh, also not longer supported. So while the last couple warnings seems like, okay, it's deprecated, it's fine, it's not supported, might still sound like, ah, oh, there might be some security relevant things in there that are not fixed. The first one seems a bit more dangerous on the first glance, right? Memory leak, do not use, oh my God. So do we have a memory leak on all Nuxt applications? What's the thing? That's also what some people commented on Reddit actually. Let's check that out actually, if that's the case or not. And that is also important because that applies to any project, not only Nuxt itself, it could be Nitro, it could be any other meta framework, um, it could be any bundler, let's see. When we use npm, we can use a package called npmy. So we run npx npm-y and then the package name we want to check, for example, inflight. Other package managers can do the same with uh, pnpm has a y command straight away. But as we decided to use npm here, we want to use npmy and we can run npmy inflight. So in here, if we run that, we see, oh wait, no one requires inflight because we're not in the right folder. So we move into the folder, run the whole thing again, and then we'll see it is required by a dependency. And it's very commonly not the most top level dependency because we see here, okay, this is the folder, that's our package. We just created Nuxt, 
Well, it's not required by Nuxt. It's required by a subdependency, NitroPack, which has a subdependency rollup plugin CommonJS, which has glob, which has inflight. Also seeing glob is also the one package that is deprecated here, right? Uh, RimRAF glob inflight as well. So we have inflight two, three times, probably based on the glob version as well. So we can also say, okay, we do the same with glob because there was also a warning. And here we say, oh yeah, glob eight is used in here. All right, fine. Um, and we had the good old gauch or gauch. We'll do that. All right, same idea. And we do the R, we dare yet as well. And then we take a look at the actual dependency tree. And there are a few things that are very noticeable. So first, it's not a top level dependency. So you didn't install it in your own package, which means there is not so much you can do about, right? Like it's a dependency of a dependency of a dependency. Now you can start tracing that down by saying, okay, we go to the glob package and say, hey, please update your dependency. But probably the glob package is also not updated because we saw over here, hey, everything on the v9, that's a problem. So that won't work. So now we can say, okay, we can go to roll up plugin common JS. And we could check there, is, is it maybe even not the latest version? Maybe you have to say another package like NitroPack, hey, please update your rollup plugin CommonJS version. This is something we could we could check, right? Same for a versatile NFT, right? For bundling, <laughs> that's a, a package that bundles all our, um, our artifacts eventually, like prepares that and traces things. Um, nothing related to Web3 in this case. And uses Mapbox, node pre-jib, has, has, that has NPM log, which is also up here as the no longer supported package that has Goj or Gauge uh, 302. So the problem here are subdependencies. And now you might wonder, okay, I can raise an issue now. The GitHub repositories probably will say like, okay, yeah, there you have to raise things, here you have to change stuff. But it's it's a good idea to check that. But most importantly, before we wonder how we can fix or improve this, what is the consequence for us? And here we once again have to check the dependency chain because as we just mentioned, Versal NFT, that's only happening during the build step. NitroPack uses Versal NFT to trace dependencies and to pack things. So it is not used during runtime. Rollup, we know Rollup as a bundler, plugin common JS, also only available during runtime. And here our search can already stop. Usually we start all the beginning. Okay, next, yeah, runtime usage, of course, NitroPack. Runtime usage as well, obviously. Also build time, but also runtime, same as Nuxt. And then we can stop roughly here by saying, okay, yeah, there might be some packages using that. It might be outdated, but all of these are build time only dependencies. So that means that these dependencies are only used at build time when building your application. And then there is no request that can cause memory leak because it's just doing the build, right? So in that case, especially when used by a bundler, it's very unlikely that these have any security implications or beware performance implications, right? There might be some attack vectors, of course, security-wise, but if, for example, a package has, let's say, a prototype pollution CVE up there saying, okay, people can do weird things if they can change the prototype. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much in build, uh, while at runtime, that would be way more dangerous. So in this case, we can really say, yeah, okay, there are some warnings. There might be some updates needed here and there. Maybe sometimes we can force them ourselves, but commonly it's good to wait for an update of the dependency of the dependency of the dependency and let it trickle up. Usually subdependencies are also marked with a caret, right? So other packages say, yeah, yeah, we can use version two point whatsoever, but the latest version two, so you can just refresh your log file. There's also a command you can run, which is npx naxi upgrade dash dash force to make sure, okay, we want to fully recreate our log file. This also works very commonly if you want to upgrade a, a view version, for example, or any dependencies like unhead, etc., etc. So that's pretty useful. But other than that, you're, you're fine. It seems scary also because, well, NPM and other package managers, they don't necessarily know where these dependencies are used when. So it's good that they give these warnings. But it's very important to make sure to understand what these warnings mean. So will you have a memory leak because of one of these subdependencies? No, that's not really possible. Um, at least not at runtime, right? Memory leak at build time. Also, it, 
it shouldn't cause any problems. Um, but that would be at least a tiny possibility. We'd have to investigate more for that at runtime. So when your application is running, when the server is up in there, no way. So you're all good there. And this also happened in the past in, in Nuxt with other dependencies. So let's have a quick look at the Nuxt issues and talk about these. And they happily brought around three examples of issues that are pretty clear reports and warnings that are important, but luckily are not severe in any way. So one example says, oh yeah, NPM audit, we can also run that. And it says, oh yeah, all right, there are five moderate severity vulnerabilities detected. And luckily, if we'd follow along with this as well, then the main point is that Nitro Pack, so Nitro relied on something called Surf Static at the past. It had an open vulnerability, but Surf Static was only used in the dev mode anyway. And eventually it's I think it shouldn't be part of the toolchain anymore. But as it's only used in dev mode and not in production, once again, it's only moderate security vulnerability as well. Like, it's fine. It's only running in dev mode. And of course, remote code execution in dev mode would be critical, but that wouldn't be moderate. In this case, it's okay. Yeah, it's if you would run it in production, it's a problem, but it's not the case. The second issue, let's have a look. The second one also comes from NPM audit, and it said that the vdev server had some problems here saying vdev server option server fs deny can be bypassed when hosted on case insensitive file system there was even a cve pointed to that issue and it was in v5 to 5.0.11 there we go higher severity and eventually also here daniel Rowe, the lead of the next project uh, answered this needs to be addressed in vid because obviously it is an issue of that dependency but also here, it is only of the vdev server. It's not a production vulnerability and that's fine. So not much that uh, Nuxt itself can do or ever hosting it except bumping it up if there is already a fix available. But nevertheless, there are sometimes these scenarios in the dependencies. It's just important whether they are used in dev or prod and whether the code in the relevant case is relevant for dev or prod. And another example, last but not least, is actually in the same issue that I opened twice, but it's fine. Oh, actually, it was just commented. That's okay. also okay. And there was one in Lodash, right? Lodash as utility library, you might all know that. Uh, high severity, and we have the prototype pollution that I meant before, also link for that. And the idea is, oh yeah, okay, Nux 3.8.2, it's been a while. And then it's checked, okay, where is it in? We have Vite plugin checker. Okay, it depends on a vulnerable version of Lodash pick. Fine. The Vite Builder, obviously. We go deeper, the DevTools. So DevTools kit. So it was probably used in one of the sub-dependencies, but also here, DevTools, they don't really scream, oh, I'm used at runtime, I'm used in production. No, absolutely not. First of all, there is no user input that was actually exposed to Lodash.pick. So it's fine. The prototype pollution couldn't really be abused in that way. I mean, there are always cases like, okay, I have my dev server running, I share URL and somebody does weird things, which is why you shouldn't just randomly share URLs with strangers and internet that tunnels straight to your PC, but it's a totally different topic, right? But also that's what Daniel in this case answered in an issue, for example. So he said, it doesn't seem to be an issue, user input is not exposed, and it's only run development mode by the plugin checker, which is a build time thing. So to sum up here, Yes, sometimes there are vulnerabilities and dependencies, and very often you can't do much about it because not they're they're not in your dependency, but they're dependencies with dependency, dependency. Welcome to the JavaScript ecosystem, right? Important it is to check whether these are used at build or at runtime. At runtime, I would really consider taking actions because that can uh, impact the security of application by a really high amount. At build time, very often it is fine. It's still, of course, not nice, but nevertheless, it is compared to runtime will be harmless. And last but not least, let's run npm audit and then uh, wrap the whole thing up. And we run npm audit here real quick and we see zero vulnerabilities at the current Nuxt uh, setup. So if you run npm uh, run dev here, we'll also quickly see where at Nuxt 13, uh, 3.14.2 with Nitro 297. So there are also zero vulnerabilities detected by npm itself. There may be some deprecated packages, but as we went through them, that's not a problem. Uh, I hope everybody in the Reddit thread and everybody ever wondered about these warnings understands them now and can also judge by themselves in different projects, in any kind of JavaScript projects with dependencies, whether it's important or not, whether it's only used 
in your build tool chain, think of like Veed, Webpack, and so on, roll up, or in the actual runtime application. I hope that helped. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, one every Friday. Check out latest Deja View episode where we talk about performance in Vue.js. Really important, you want to have fast websites, right? Um, and of course, take a look at the other videos, maybe at the Build an Association Manager of Nux series, which is more of a long format, or uh, other videos on the channel. You know where to find it. Have a great day, and uh, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button, please. That would be amazing. See you soon, folks. Happy hacking. <laughs>